Here we have a nice freeze-dried specimen of an equine thoracic limb. We start up here. We have the distal end of the radius. Then we have the intermediate carpal bone, the third carpal bone, the third metacarpal bone, or the cannon bone. Here we have the fetlock joint and the first phalanx, also known as the long pastern, the second phalanx, also known as the short pastern, and the pastern joint in between them, and then finally the third phalanx, which is the coffin bone, this here is known as the coffin joint. Okay, if we look on this dorsal surface here, we can see coming into the picture is the common digital extensor tendon coming down and attaching to the extensor process. On the palmar side, we can see the palmar carpal ligament, which is a thickening of the carpal joint capsule. And that's going to be continuous with the distal check ligament, which then blends into the deep digital flexor tendon coming through here. And we can follow that all the way down to where it inserts on the flexor surface of the coffin bone. Excuse me. We see here the suspensory ligament. Remember the suspensory ligament is going to split and so we don't see it now because it's going to go to the abaxial surfaces of the proximal sesamoids and then have an extensor branch that comes over to join this common digital extensor tendon. Okay, but remember this is going to be pulling those proximal sesamoids proximally, and so we need something to counter that pull. And we see here the distal sesamoidian ligaments. This is the straight to either side of that, it's going to be the oblique, and then between the two proximal sesamoids is going to be the cruciate. Okay. We're not seeing the proximal sesamoids here because our cut is right down the center. And so right here is our intersesmoidian ligament. Then we have our superficial digital flexor tendon coming down. And then we recall that it's going to split and then go to the, the distal surfaces of the first and proximal surfaces of the second phalanx. Now something to notice also here very nicely is each of these joints here has what are called pouches. We have a dorsal and a palmar pouch to each joint. These are basically extensions of the joint capsule. Okay, that allows a greater range of movement of the joint. This proximal part of the palmar pouch of the fetlock comes way up proximally so that if you palpate the button of the splint just distal to that between the suspensory ligament and the cannon bone, you will feel a little fluctuant little pouch there. And that is that proximal palmar pouch of the fetlock joint. That's a good place to take a sample of the joint fluid or make an injection if needed. We see here at the pastern joint, also a dorsal and a palmar pouch. And then also at the coffin joint, a dorsal and a palmar pouch. So here is the distal sesamoid bone, also known as the navicular bone. Here is the navicular impar ligament, attaching it to P3. And this space right here, between the navicular bone and the deep digital flexor tendon, that's going to be the navicular bursa. This connective tissue structure here is going to be the digital cushion. I think that's all I got on this nice specimen for you.